Every drop of water you consume could be hiding dangerous contaminants. There's only one way to find out, and that's by testing your water. The peace of mind that comes from knowing your well water is safe for your family is priceless. Yet many homeowners risk their health by not testing correctly. In this video, we'll go through the crucial steps you can take to accurately test your water and find out what contaminants you have, if any, and how safe your water is. From choosing the right kits to understanding what these contaminants have on your health, in this video will guide you through the steps you can take to protect your family and enjoy clean, safe water every day. Let's dive in. Hi, my name is Jerry Bolfin, WK Certified Master Water Specialist, and welcome back to our channel, where we help you solve your well water problems and have clean, safe water throughout the house. So we have two types of kits. One is the do-it-yourself kit at home, other is a lab test. The do-it-yourself kit is important because you can do the, the test yourself at home in your kitchen and get the results immediately. And then also by having your own kit, you can keep track of any changes in your water. For instance, our easy well water test kit comes with a total dissolved solid meter where you can test for the total dissolved solids in your water every year, which is recommended and monitor to see if there are any changes in the well water. You can also test for hardness, say if you have a water softener, you can check, see how hard the water is before and after and make any adjustments to save on salt and water. You can check the pH of your water very easily with these kits and check for iron manganese. So, there, so a do-it-yourself kit is important to have in your toolkit as a well owner. It's a good idea to have your own kit at home where you can test for these common contaminants yourself and get results quickly. However, there are some contaminants where you cannot use the do-it-yourself kit for, and that's why we recommend a laboratory test. So we have different options for laboratory testing. One, you can research it. Sometimes there's a local lab that'll do the analysis for you. The uh, county health department might recommend the lab. Uh, we also have our simple lab test kit <clears throat> that we send to you and then has various bottles in it with an ice pack and then you ship it back overnight to the lab and within about a week you get a comprehensive report and there are different types of these lab tests you can order depending on what your considerations are for instance say you live near agriculture you want to test for pesticides and herbicides or you're concerned about heavy metals or maybe you're concerned about radon there could be different lab kits based on or you, can, or you can get one that does it all. So different prices. One good thing about both the, the do-it-yourself kits and the lab kits, they've really gone down in price. When we first started in the business 30 years ago, it was not uncommon to get a complete panel. You might have spent $1,000, $1,200 to get all the pesticides, herbicides. It was painstaking uh, and expensive and time consuming and often had to be done by a professional to come out to your house to do the sampling. But now, with the advances in technology, and they've really streamlined it, so you get really accurate results for a fraction of that cost. If you're trying to solve problems for iron, manganese, rust staining, odor, or you want to know if your water softener is working, or if your water is corrosive, then you can the general mineral easy well water test kit is a good way to go. If you want to solve for problems such as to see if you have pesticides, herbicides, or heavy metals, then we recommend a laboratory test. Now, there are a lot of really low cost tests available that claim to test for pesticides, herbicides, and lead, and they're not very accurate. And there are a lot of um, other contaminants in the water that can interfere with the results. So it can give you a false sense of oh, my water's fine, it might not be. So we do recommend at least once, and then every, say, three to five years that you do get a lab test done, so you know, are there any heavy metals in the water? What are the levels? Is there any kind of chemical contamination? And so um, that's the main difference. So a lab test is more for health threat, um, uh, contaminants such as, say, you live in near intensive agriculture, or you live near petroleum activity, or maybe there's industry nearby, or you live in a heavy populated area where you're wondering about septic tanks from neighbors, then it's a good idea to at least once, and then maybe every three to five years, get a full laboratory test done, the test for all the chemical contaminants that you can't get with a uh, one of these do-it-yourself kits. Our kit is better than 
what you typically find on Amazon, say, or like the test strips. It has drops and it has the TDS meter. So you get more accurate results, but it's not gonna tell you contaminants such as lead, arsenic, um, or chemical contaminants such as glyphosate or atrazine or other herbicides or pesticides. So it's a good idea to have it to do regular testing for your well for general mineral and again, your total is all solids, but periodically, depending on where you live and what your, where your uh, well is situated, you want to get a laboratory test done. That's what we recommend. So if you're interested in either one of these, I just put a link in the description below. Just click there and we'll get one coming out to you. So now that you have your kit, one question comes up, how often should I test my water? We recommend annual testing for coliform bacteria, nitrate, and total dissolved solids. If you get the easy well water test kit, you'll have a TDS meter in there. You can test your total dissolved solids anytime. And for coliform bacteria, there's also home tests that you can get. For nitrate, we do recommend a lab test, but there are nitrate test kits available. But generally, for annual testing, we recommend coliform bacteria, nitrate, and total dissolved solids, so you can see if there's any changes in your well water. And then every three to five years, we recommend getting a lab test and then you'll see, are there any heavy metals in the water? Any trace amounts of chemicals, uh, PFAS, those forever chemicals, which are getting more common. And you just get a good idea. You don't have to do it every month or every year, but every few years you should get a complete panel done to see if there's any changes in your water. Finally, there are some uh, situations that can come up that don't have anything to do with time. For instance, has your well been flooded? Were you in a flood? If you're in a flood, then of course, you have to get your well properly sanitized and serviced. And then at that point, you definitely would want to retest. If you have an earthquake uh, your, and your well um, has been through an earthquake, that can often quite dramatically change the water quality. So it's a good idea to get your water tested then. Finally, if you've been in an extreme drought, unfortunately, that's another good time to get your water tested because as the water levels drop, the, the, the water table can change and contaminants can change as well. And then the last thing is if you notice any change in your water, if you notice any actual look or feel in the water, does the water seem more corrosive than it used to be? Is there any sediment or then uh, iron, rust, sediment or sand in the water? Then that's another time. That means something's changed and before the water's good, now it's changed, that's the time to get it tested as well. And if you have any questions on that, just give us a call or contact us, our support team at support at cleanwaterstore.com and we'll answer any question you have. So how do you prep for the test? So when you're preparing to test your water, there's a few things you wanna know. You're testing your well, you wanna test your groundwater, but the thing is your pipes might be contaminated. So you wanna make sure you run the water long enough so the water is coming from the well. So that's usually four or five minutes You're running the water. You don't want to get the first straw coming out of the tap, usually. And so you, you're running the water until you're getting water from the ground. And then if you're testing for coliform bacteria, or when you're testing for coliform bacteria, you want to make sure you don't accidentally contaminate the sample so it has a false positive. So it shows, oh, I've got coliform bacteria, when in fact you don't. But what happens is it's very common that fixtures are contaminated. So for instance, the aerator on the end of your faucet can have little food particles stuck in it, be totally contaminated and, and show a false positive. So you want to remove the aerator and then you just want to follow the instructions with a lot of these samples, like the lab uh, tests, they give you instructions on how to do it. Generally, you're not rinsing the bottles, you're unscrewing the cap, carefully filling up the bottle, putting it back on in terms of sending a sample to a lab, you generally don't want any air in the sample. So you wanna fill the sample all the way up to the top, make sure there's no air. This can affect the pH, how the pH turns out, because if you have air in the sample, the, the pH could change, if, especially if there's, the pH is low, is acid, because there's carbon dioxide in the water. So you, don't, you wanna make sure there's no air bubbles in the water. Just fill it up to the top and that's good. Uh, the other thing is you don't want the sample to sit around a long time. So when you, you want to think about, okay, I'm going to be doing the sampling. So I'm going to be doing the sampling and then I'm going to take that thing and send it right out. 
You don't want to sample it and then wait a week to send it back in. You want to get it tested as soon as possible. And of course, if you're doing your own home test, then you would be sampling and doing it right there on the spot. The other thing you want to consider is that if you're seeing like blue stains from copper or green stains, or you're experiencing corrosion and you, and you, you have copper pipes, which is very common, and you want to test for copper, then in that case, you wouldn't want to let the water run. You would want to do what's called a first draw sample. So you let the water sit overnight and you take a few, maybe a liter of water or two out of the faucet and then you test that for copper and then you know, hey, this is what my pipes, what's happening in my pipes, they're getting ruined by my acid water or whatever, whatever's causing the corrosion. So, but generally, most of the time, for most of the tests, you're not doing a first draw sample. You are running the water. The other thing to consider is that you just want to keep everything clean. You want to make sure there's not a lot of dust or wind if you, when you're taking the sample. Obviously, you wouldn't want to contaminate the sample with any kind of dust or bacteria. And when you're taking uh, your coliform bacteria tests, you don't want to, of course, touch inside the bottle because it's very easy to contaminate it and come up with positive coliform. So you just, you just want to keep it clean and follow the instructions, fill up the bottles, send them away as soon as possible. Or if you're doing your home test, do it right on the spot. So if your test report comes back and there is contamination, what do you do? Well, it really depends on what the contaminant is. If your water comes back with E. coli in it, then you should not use the water for bathing or drinking. That's a lot of times you see they have a boil order. That means that they're recommending to the citizens, don't use this water until, unless you've boiled it because it's contaminated with bacteria. But you take precautions depending on what the contamination is. And then uh, you can consult a water treatment professional and find out, is this something I can uh, treat or is it something I can mitigate? For instance, is there some way I can stop the contamination? If you have coliform bacteria, then you, the first step you want to take is, how can I stop the contamination from happening in my well first, before you go to a treatment system? But sometimes you can't prevent it. it, depends on the situation. But the thing is you want to consult either a well treatment professional such as us or a well contractor or a pump contractor to see what can be done to stop the contamination and mitigate the problem. So I gave you a good overview of how to test your well water. And I've also created a whole series of videos that takes a deeper dive into all things about well water treatment. Click the video that's on your screen right now and I'll see you there.